you a better sense of your questions today because as music teachers and also as music educators and majors, we know about the, you know, for music majors, notorious NPTA is all about that, right? You know, how do you teach your student and how are you gonna keep the documentation and how are you gonna evidence if your student grew uh, musically from one point to the other. And music teachers, of course, you're being asked to assess your students, right? And to communicate with the administrators and outside people. So, but most importantly, assessment is important so that we can meet the musical needs of our kids, of students, right? So do, we, we're teaching so many students in one class. It depends on teacher safety a lot, a lot of students. But how, as a music teacher, do you know individual students' music needs? So how do you know? You can observe and maybe write to you notes down, but you have to have some systematic documentation to know your individual students. So in this session, I want to share how to do that. It may not be perfect, but I just want to share my rubric and how you can do assessment in a music class. Okay? So need for assessment to individualize instruction. So in your student group, you might have high achieving students and low achieving students, and there's a middle achieving student group, right? And most often music teachers design the lesson plan most of the time to meet the middle group. And if we do that, we're gonna lose the high achieving group students and the low achieving group students, and the high achieving students will get bored because the tasks that are given in the class is just not um, up to their level. They're gonna be bored because I already know this. How many times is my teacher gonna ask me for the same pattern over and over again? So when I first started teaching, um, I did a lot of pattern instruction to my students because I feel that patterns are very important in musical vocabulary which provides the readiness to improvisation later on. You need to have words in order to have a conversation, right? Same thing in music, you wanna have a lot of rhythm patterns and tonal patterns in order to have the materials for improvisation later on. So I do a lot of pattern instruction, and we were sitting in a circle, and I looked at, at okay, Jessica, and I gave her a pattern, and she kind of looked at me like, what are you doing? Like, we did this pattern like 10 times, I already know it, okay? She gave me like, bah, 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 like that. I was like, oh, I did something not good because I didn't know her level. Um, so if I gave her that same pattern 10 times, what have I done? I just wasted her time, <laughs> right? So I realized, oh, I was a gospel teacher, and I said, okay, I need to document this somehow so that I don't give the same pattern to my students all the time. So individualized instruction. So give the necessary task to students who are high achieving students so they are not bored and low achieving students because, and they're not struggling if I give um, a, a little bit more easy task. Evaluate my instruction. So as a teacher, we are so into lesson planning and giving instruction all the time, but how many times <coughs> do we evaluate ourselves as an instructor, as a music teacher? How do we do it? If we know where our students are, we know how my teaching is doing in the classroom. So if my students are struggling, that means it's probably my fault because I'm not doing my job. If my students are, think that this music activities or tasks are just so easy, then I'm not giving them more challenging work. So to evaluate my instruction so that I can better design the lesson plan next time, okay? I know it's really, really difficult because we're teaching so many students and we have so little time. It's like 45 minutes. document musical growth. We're lucky, although we are very overwhelmed because, well, we're lucky because we see the kindergarten and we see them until fifth grade. So we have six years to know where they are musically. So we're actually seeing them how they grow music from kindergarten to fifth, to fifth grade. And you know, as you know, elementary is a very critical year in to develop your music music and your music aptitude. And outside of the class, um, we want to communicate with other people, okay? So when I first started teaching, I had what's called teacher con parent-teacher conference, and we each had a desk. There was a music desk, there was a science desk, there was a language desk, and et cetera, and nobody would come to my desk. <laughs> like, maybe Mr. Johnson would call me like, hi, Missy, I'm sure my son is having fun, and then he would leave. <laughs> I think what I'm doing 
doing in my class is important. So next time parent-teacher conference come, I email the parents that, you know, I have something to talk about. It was this child. I have like evidence. <laughs> so they would come and talk to me. <laughs> like, okay, oh, that's what my son is doing or my daughter is doing in the classroom. Oh, well, how can I, how can I help my child to uh, become a better musician skill? So they begin to have interest in what they're doing in the music class, okay? And also accountability, people want to know, are you teaching what you're, what you say you're gonna teach in the classroom? Can I count on you? So accountability. Um, teacher evaluation, so assessment is central in teacher evaluation, and it's really important for the tenure, and also promotion, and et cetera. So teacher evaluation is very critical. And for music educators who are gonna be student teaching, SEP is all about lesson planning, teaching, assessing the student, and showing the growth, okay? All right, so assigning yourself a sense of assessment, you want to assess in the context of learning because young children, when they are asked to do something, they're not gonna do it. <laughs> they would rather do it because they want to. So if I take one student, like one first grade, take to the room, like, can you do this for me? Ba, 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 and they're not gonna, like, no, like, really? I was doing something fun over here. Why are you taking me out? Why are you putting me out from this fun activity and let me do this, right? So especially younger ones, um, they're reluctant to perform on demand. Like in a pencil or paper, they're gonna like it. And if we're doing music, so why don't we do it in music in way, in a very musical way? So we want to assess our students in the context of learning. So our students are learning process is play, especially elementary setting. Um, so we're not asking students to go into the room and record their patterns or singing, just put a microphone, although some might like it. But it's, it's all we do in the elementary classroom is playful, right? We love to design playful activities. We want to make um, this play activity very playful. And it's an efficient tool for the teacher because you don't have to spend outside trying to assess outside of the classroom, think about how many hours you're going to spend on that assessment only. Like you don't want to really do that because you have too hard work to make sure of that. And that's going to make your life very difficult. So we want to assess in the context of learning and in the time. Important, assess what <coughs> students are familiar with, okay? So you have to teach the activities and then when they've learned it, you're going to assess it. You're not going to give them new tasks and expect them to do it. So give the task that's familiar to them. Assess no more than five to six students on one dimension. So for example, let's say I want to assess my students singing, okay? I have 25 students in my classroom. Will I do 25 students assessing in one class period? That means singing one song 25 times. It's not gonna work. They're gonna get bored, right? And it's not good for them. So what I uh, recommend is just do five students the most, five to six students the most on one single dimension. So for example, in a classroom setting, you might have a lessons that are singing, chanting, and movement. You can assess 15 students. Five students on singing, five students on chanting, five students on movement. But you're not gonna assess 15 students on one single dimension. Like imagine, kids love to do repetition, but they don't wanna repeat 15 times. Other students also need to be engaged in learning. So when I assess Eleanor, all the other students must be engaged in something. So they are learning at the same time in the social um, life. Assess individually in a group context. So we want to know their individual musical needs. So we want to uh, assess the student individually rather than as a group. Practice so that you are comfortable with being an assessment. So if you're starting this, um, this will be very new. You have, let's say you have a microphone and you have a card, assessment card, and you have to walk around, you have to teach, listen to them, and assess and document on the card. <coughs> there will be many things happening simultaneously, right? So you want to practice how, I, uh, how you're doing in the classroom. Practice as if you're performing. 
practice how you are going to practice music. I used to have like um, other music teachers sit in a circle and then I practice um, like that. Okay. So first mm -hmm. one, I'm going to sing this song for you. Can I have some volunteers sing this song? Falling 
falling down, falling down, or inclination is not correct there. And five, the rhythm like contour, and the correctness is just good inclination. So I have some examples. And I want you to kind of refresh this model. Third. Uh,
activities. So if you're teaching this in organ and you want students to audit their resting tone, they do dominant tonic all the time. So you, if you want to assess if your students can sing the tonic in relation to five dominant, this would be the activity. So if you if you look at the board, do you see the S asterisk mark? Okay, there's four of them. So if I sing this song once through, how many people I can I assess? Four. If I sing this song two times, how many people? Eight. So can you sing two times and I can assess eight people, eight students. All right, everybody, so that's the Italian environment. Everybody knows, and everybody can sing the resting tone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, why don't you sing, you sing, sing with me, <coughs> but when you sing, sing with your whole body, we're going to try and sing to you. Sing to your best arm before you're going to sing. give the score and they cannot join the blue library with me. So if that's what they need to. But um, four or five, yeah. Do you have any questions so far? Well, and you should have the kids in the room. But you are doing this with the students of uh, the third, fourth, mm -hmm. and fifth. At least they could make the goal for themselves to get better. So you should mm -hmm. be sharing your rubrics with them. Sure. And how they're doing and what they could do better next time. Yeah, and then so they can improve and, and, and work on some of these things. Right. Um, target like 
got fours all the time. But I could tell them, you know what you can do? Can you look at me and you know if I did a lot of different breaths? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can tweak it till I push better. Mm -hmm. It has to be part of your instruction. You assess them, but it has to be part of your instruction. Mm -hmm. Next question, please. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, I know everybody knows this now. <laughs>
to your right, and here's the four you're going to walk through right. <laughs>
we, I want to tell them with the ball pin.
one fish and in one open palm, that is different. So this time, you're going to do <coughs> a few this time. So for example, ba, 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 ba. between these two so they know oh that's different okay ba, 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 something like that okay so when you see this what your is this hand different different, different. different. Well, same, same. Different. different okay my mother your mother little cup to me So 
and it's, it's, it's a big deal for a younger grade. So um, we're almost out of time, but you know, it's important that we assess our students first to meet their needs, musical needs, and two, evaluate my instruction, and also keeping a system and document so that as a teacher, I know the growth of these students from kindergarten to fourth grade. So I think that's all for my presentation. Is there any question that you have? Anything? No? Yeah. Do you usually use the neutral syllable when you're at Green Ribbon? Or do you ever do any of like yeah, the I Kodai or the other yeah, Es sure. and how? Sure, yeah. yeah. So before I ask them to transfer to mm -hmm. full syllables, I have to do a lot of this uh, total syllables like Kodai or Gordon, you have to do it because mm -hmm. if they're not familiar with it, they won't be able to see it. Sure. So neutral syllables, total syllables, hidden syllables, all the